Aí o Will Control the Time, Sabrina. Ué. Yes. It's, it's your turn now. You can begin, Sabrina. Ok. Ok, see you my presentation. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, good mo <laughs> okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Sabrina, and I am PhD uh, student in Applied Linguistic Program at Unicinos. My advisor is Professor Ka Professor Katia Franza, and the title of my communication is Adolescents in Social Educational Context: Improving Reading. One moment, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, the subject of my speech is a report on action develop, developed in uh, the research project New Meanings for Students of the Final Years of Social Education, Languages for Autonomy and Citizenship, coordinated by the PhD professor Katia Fronze. And one moment. And the purpose of this communication is, is to reflect and sampling data from the Jumanji expedition reading project the, uh, developed within the scope of the research project New Meanings for Students in the final years of elementary school in the context of social education, uh, languages for autonomy and citizenship. Um, the short name of our project is New Meanings Project. Is supported and financed. Mm, it's not good. And elementary ah, okay. education, adolescence, quality, and equity in public school. And this study is to finance with. Sabrina. De pessoal. Sabrina. Bra Brasil. Sabrina. We are having oh. problems of connection. Okay. For me, for me, there is some mm. something wrong, and is just for me. No, it's for me too. I can't okay. hear either. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the. Is it possible? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not good. Yes, I agree. Maybe Sabrina could disconnect and come back. I yeah, don't that's a good idea. We, we, we can at least try, okay? Yes, yeah, Sabrina, I don't know if you are hearing us. But we can disconnect it, disconnect your internet, and uh, you can try again. What do you think? I will you write a message in WhatsApp for for him, for her. <laughs> Sorry. You just click on the red sign, which means leave the meeting, right in the middle at the bottom. And then come back again. Okay. I think Sabrina's still there, but she's behind her <coughs> avatar. Sabrina um, told me that uh, she is trying to change to change the net. 
and um, I hope she can. <laughs> right. Yeah, I can see it on the list. She's enumerated that twice in the participants. So. Yeah. So she's trying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but. <laughs> well, that's technology, right? We cannot predict that. Yeah. We have, have many, many times this problem. Oh, yeah. 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 Hello. I will start. Okay. Back. Yeah. Back. Back. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Welcome again. <laughs> I, I think okay. you can begin uh, the, um, the last slide, not this slide. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we can return the slide. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, um, okay. Uh, this research project is supported and financed by Fundação Itaú Social in partnership with Fundação Carlos Chagas, within the scope of the research notes, years and of elementary education, adolescence equity, uh, equality and equity in public schools. And this study is to finance the, with support of Coordenação de Aperfeiçoamento de Pessoal de Nível Superior Brasil. The social educational context, the child and adolescent state, conceptualizes and act in fraction as a descri described conduct as or a crime or misdemeanor based on this concept. Uh, the state also establishes the measures that the component authority may apply. Uh, to the ad adolescent having among others the social educational measure of admission to an educational establishment detention unity such measure is a the uh, deprivation of liberty so in brazil according to the statute of the child and adolescent social educational measures are legal measures with pedagogical purposes applied to adolescents who are involved in the practice or infractions. And the denomination of social educational measures considers the peculiar condition of the adolescent as a developing person considering the constitutional definitions because instead of penal prison, it assigns punishment predominantly uh, educational character. And the New Meanings Project started in July 2019 and has been adapted and reformulated during the COVID-19 pandemic. The research project is carried out in partnership between university, university and public school. The project's partner school is a public school inserted in a social education detention unit. The purpose of the new meanings project is to implement, implement the teaching methodology capable of stimulating autonomy protagonism and motivating the sense of youth citizenship in a school in social educational context through the language that permeate pedagogical practices in different, uh, in different areas of knowledge and their respective curricular components. And the Jumanji expedition is a reading project and is inspired by the Jumanji films. In the film, the characters enter a game and acquire the identities of the fictional beings of the game, as well as the reader when mobilizing his imagination during the reading. The objective 
the Human Expedition is to promote an immersive movement with adolescents, encouraging the, them uh, to access an impatient unit library, to practice reading, to, to participate and collaborate through reading clubs and integration with the curricular subjects at school. It did you and the demand expedition is a reading project in game, gamified language. The gamification consists of using game thinking, their styles, strategies, and design elements, such as mechanics and strategies in non-game contexts, as a possibility to engage the people in developing actives and solving problems. And the article foundations of human expedition. Theoretical, theoretically, uh, theoretically, the human expedition is based in the studies about the reading and gamification. Ferrarese, Junior Carvalho, Kleiman e Moraes, Kleiman e Schleimer, 2018. And And uh, the Human Expedition is organized in four missions, and the experiences of the missions are recorded in a journal or diary. Uh, the missions were organized considering the distance uh, co uh, caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as possibility, uh, possible flexibilization of the measures of social distancing. Mission one, welcome uh, to the library. The teenager has to visit the, the library, move through the space and select a book to read. Mission two, exploring the reading territory. The teenager reads the chosen book in his dorm. Mission three, Forming knowledge webs, the teenager interact in reading groups. In mission, and mission four, exploring the territory of the school and classes. In the mission, it is expected to establish connections between the, the recreational reading and the school curricular knowledge. The participants are teenagers between the ages of 15 and 18, deprived of liberty for a social educational measure and two, and two social educational and two social educational agents. The research is being held in a detention unit based in the largest juvenile detention complex in a city in Southern Brazil. About, about, the, the, about the records in the journals, we highlight the notes of two, two teenagers who re report their experience in libraries and their uh, reading experience. The names men uh, mentioned are fictitious pictures uh, to preserve the identity of the participants. Sabrina? Oi? You, you have five minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Então, um, about the records in, in the journal, Gabriel, um, I haven't been to libraries very often no at the institute, institution reading has draw more attention to me because it's one of hobbies have at the moment. This is a new experience for me, even because I now have more time to, re, to read it than and I had if, uh, it when I was on the street, street uh, in freedom. And Rafael, uh, the only library I went to was when I was um, 12. 12. 
Okay, okay, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. 12 old at my school, uh, close to my house, afterwards when I was deprived of freedom. Uh, I visited the library of the institution where he has. Comparing uh, experience I had in this library at library of the institution where he is located. There are many titles for young people generating indecision when choosing. The records indicate the records indicate that to access a library is more frequent in the station and the reading become a new experience and a hobby term. The detention unit is seen as a space to enable reading when opposite to living in freedom, as they don't have time to read or access the library. In our final rem uh, remarks, we highlight some information about the development of the Dumont expedition. Due to the worsening of the COVID-19 pandemic in southern Brazil, so far we have only been able to carry out missions one and two relating to visits to the library and reading in the dormitory. Of the four units served by the school, only, uh, uh, only one had a active library. The others had the, their libraries disabled due to lack of professionals. professionals. The implementation or of the gamified reading projects is ev uh, ev ev evaluated a possible due its playful and immersive potential. With the recent reopening of the school and the, the flexibilization of measures of social distance, it is expected uh, to de develop missions three and four related to interaction in the reading club and the exploration of readings by the school in the curricular projects. And finally, our future perspective is to develop and implement together with the school's teachers practical, uh, practical activities to improve their teenagers' reading and writing skills. And are there's our uh, references and thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sabrina. I didn't, I didn't count the minutes who, who you were disconnected, disconnected. So you are in time. Thank you very much. Um, and we can, uh, we can, uh, uh, we can have the the other presentation uh, with Natasha Peskova. The the title is linguistic landscape as a means of verbal impact and manipulation. Please, Natasha. Natasha, your uh, your phone is not connected. Your microphone is switched off, Natasha. Yes. We can't uh -huh. hear you. Natasha. Please turn on your microphone. Natasha, okay. Natasha, your microphone is turned off.
No. Yes, now it's all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's all right, just from the very beginning. Sorry, okay. really. Sorry. No, no problem. We have no, now, now I see the problem with... <laughs> mm -hmm. Have to start again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it all right now, yes? Do you uh, hear me? Do you see me? Yeah? Uh, you are uh, uh, oh, oh we we are hearing you and seeing you but we are not seen uh, watching our your presentation you, you can don't see the, you again don't, you don't see my presentation no it's so what's, what's just was the problem click on present at the bottom as you did before yes. because yes. we saw it before but we couldn't hear you yes, yes, yes. Exactly. there are some problems yes Mm -hmm. Well, um, just, um, I can uh, if I can write my my email in the chat, and if you think it's better, you can send me your presentation, and I can I I try to share for you. What do you think? Just a moment, yeah. Just a moment. It was all right, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was all right, yes. Okay. Don't worry. I, have my email, you. if you want. And do you see it now? Do you see my presentation now? No. Not yet. Yes. No. Yes. No. Not still yet. No. Well, okay. because my, my email, my correct script, I wrote wrong my correct maybe it's also possible to put the presentation in the chat i know it's possible in zoom just but it was uh, but you could see the presentation yeah, we saw it. that yes yeah we saw it yes we saw the first the opening slide yes just a moment really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm really sorry. I don't no, know no. what was the problem because it was quite all right before that. Yes, I tried it. You you can um, we can try uh, disconnect and connect again uh, yes. from. Yes, and let me try do that. We we'll wait for you. Don't worry. <laughs> yes. So just uh, try. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you see me now? Yes or no? Yes, I can you, see you. You are yes. okay. <laughs> yes. Really, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there is something wrong with my presentation. Yes, as far as I can judge. Yes, mm -hmm. the, as, as somebody was saying in the chat, you have to open the presentation on your desktop. Yes, and it is already open. That is why is I can't. It is already open. That is why I can't understand what's really the problem. I began. Do you see us, Natasha? Do you yes, see us? Yes, I see all of you, and I see the beginning of our demonstration and the window, and just I try to say that I want. Yes, I want to share my presentation with you, and the slideshow. Just oh, it's coming. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Is it all right now? Yes. 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 Right? yes. yes. Well, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry, dear colleagues. Don't worry. No, don't yeah. worry. Don't just, worry. Uh, we have time and I have a good presentation. Just, I want uh, just to begin with uh, uh, just uh, with the words that I'm a professor of the Bashki State University and uh, uh, my uh, present uh, investigation is devoted to the psycholinguistic study uh, of uh, linguistic landscape by the youth uh, generation, by the students of our university. 
and uh, uh, the linguistic landscape which I'm going uh, to show you today and uh, to discuss the, uh, um, just um, is the characteristic of our city which is called Ufa. Ufa is the capital of the Republic Bashkortostan, which is situated in the Urals, Russia, as you can see, yes. And the hypothesis of my investigation is connected with uh, my proposal that any text, and city text or urban text too, is a means of verbal impact uh, on the addressee. Uh, sometimes the author's impact on the addressee is intentional and planned beforehand, though in some other cases it can be spontaneous, unintended and not planned. Besides, the process of information perception in the implicit uh, internal language, the dialogue, sorry, between the addressee and the author, uh, the addressee plays an active role and sometimes resist some information, doesn't receive some information. Uh, Natasha? <laughs> yeah? Natasha? Yeah? Uh, yes? Sorry. Is it possible you uh, uh, put the presentation in the uh, mode of presentation because, uh, and I, I don't know if you have to uh, change the, the slide because we are, we are seeing the first slide and in um, uh, in a little <laughs> uh, size, <laughs> if you can so, put. But if it, sorry, if it, if it, you uh, have to uh, to press sorry. at the uh, top slideshow. And what yeah. about? Do you see now the second slide? No, no, no. Because because you are not in the uh, presentation uh, is, uh, shape, your presentation format. You are uh, in normal for edition. Please you change, change you the mode, the, the slideshow, please. It says in Russian, slideshow at the top. So you you couldn't see my slides? No, mm. just the yes. Yes. yes, we, we so what see did I do? your slide, but the, the only first slide, because you are really? in the edition I, mode. I'm in a, in a distant mode. You are in addition mode, in, mo uh, in mode of addition. Um, you and have to change yes. share presentation. I, I, but I just uh, made this uh, regime of sharing the presentation. Then but again, it's what okay, I... it's okay. You only oh. need to look over your slide and there's a line of different links, right? Oh, yeah. You're in so the last I'm... one now. Yeah, and and do you see it now? Sorry, the last one. <laughs> the last one. And, and yeah. uh, now, can you see the second? Yeah. Okay. Can you see the second now? Yes. Yeah. Is it all right? Really? Okay. Then I should do it this way. All right. So now I uh, I was speaking about the hypothesis, as you can see, and now I should say about the uh, general. principles yes uh, principles and of the main task of my experimental study so the exper can you see now the slide yes yeah. sorry can you see the slide yeah. now yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you see now then what is the main task of the experimental study yeah so we uh, just uh, were going to reveal some verbal responses accompanying perception and interpretation of a realized urban text yeah uh, so, by the participants of the experiment. Uh, we were going also to investigate the language consciousness in our link of unity of our city by analyzing their verbal reactions and revealing the participants' attitude to the problems of globalization, national self-identification and cultural values of different historical periods in the life of our city. So, pre-revolutionary period, Soviet periods, just uh, in the city history. And we are going to make explicit some implicit aspects of verbal impact on the linguistic landscape of uh, just youth generation in a polyethnic city. Is it all right now? Do you see the... Yes or no? Yes. 
well, all right. So uh, then uh, a few words about theoretical backgrounds of our investigation. So we uh, just uh, investigated the process of perceiving and comprehending the text and the city text based on the ideas developed by Anatoly Novikov at the Moscow Institute of Linguistics. And um, uh, our study uh, was based on the notion of an active addressee and on the idea that the perception of any text type is an active process of generating the so-called internal text and counter text in the recipient's linguistic consciousness. The internal text is the form of recipient's verbal responses and it is considered as an online interaction between a recipient's verbal consciousness and the text content or the author consciousness, so to say. So then the counter text is considered by us as an addressee response to the verbal impact of the author. In the process of the text comprehension, recipients generate the associations expressed their personal opinions, visualize and evaluate text information, both emotionally and logically. And in, the, in this process, they are guided by both encyclopedic knowledge and their personal practice experience. So the participants of our experiments, a few words about it. Uh, I should say so, so that uh, uh, they were mostly presented by student groups, postgraduate groups uh, and teachers groups too. And we also just uh, took technical staff, uh, lab assistants and so on, uh, a special group. More than 100 participants from the age group of 18 uh, to 23 years old studying at the natural science faculties and humanity departments of the Bashki State University have been involved in the experiments as recipients of UFA linguistic landscape. And the older group of participants from 25 to 65 years old included teachers, engineers and technical staff. Uh, so, now about the stages of the... Uh, so, we had three stages. The first stage included rapid-fire questions concerning participants' attitude uh, to uh, the city text. Uh, such questions as, do they pay attention to the linguistic landscape of Ufa? Do they see it at all uh, in case if they go along the streets every day? Is there anything that attracts their attention in the Ufa city text? And the participants should answer the questions in short. Uh, then the second stage of experiment was carried out in the computer classes of the university where the experimental participants uh, could watch uh, short videos about two for street signs, notices, street names, advertisements and so on. Uh, their task at this stage was to write immediately anything that crosses their minds in connection with this particular street name or street sign or just uh, any advertisement, in other words, to register their very first impressions and feelings concerning the information presented in the video shot, uh, which plays a role of stimulus uh, to which a recipient gives a response without any restrictions. And the participants' comments were, uh, were anonymous. And then the third stage, uh, the, uh, the participants of the experiments had uh, the chance to write their proposals concerning some improvements in the UFA linguistic uh, landscape, which could make the linguistic environment better, according to their opinion, by their opinion. This stage was optional, and the participants could do it in their, just at their will, and again anonymously so that they could feel uh, free. Uh, then uh, about uh, the results of the experiment. So the most important result of the experiment was a number of internal texts, uh, more than a hundred, consisting of verbal responses or reactions of our participants. The results of both statistical and qualitative analysis um, of the reactions obtained by us showed uh, that the direction of evaluation have the highest frequency of the 
the reactions. The reactions expressing different opinions also reaches a high percentage, 20%, and then 14% to the reaction of association. Our analysis uh, shows that the verbal responses called in our experiment method as evaluation, opinion, argumentation, or reasoning usually reflect uh, the signs of verbal impact in different forms of disagreement or agreement, disapproval or approval. And um, at the next slide, just I can see some examples of participants' verbal responses. So you see here disapproval and approval expressed by emotional and evaluative words and phrases, judgments, exclamation marks. So you see here, that is, of course, the translation of Russian reactions in the English language. But I... The, Maturia, <laughs> beautiful in the Bashki language. It was uh, just a regional reaction. Oh, sorry. Sorry, just it was eight, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, and the uh, opinions of agreement and disagreement you can see here concerning Bashki and Russian languages present in the linguistic landscape, yeah? Uh, concerning English language in the street names, uh, here concerning some uh, just Soviet uh, just names uh, still present in our streets. So you can see here uh, the reactions of our participants. And uh, next slide shows the model of Text comprehension, you can see nuclear verbal reactions, peripheral and marginal or uh, casual verbal reactions. So, and as I told you, I, I'll show it uh, just below in some table, the percentage, but uh, still uh, I should say that uh, emotional uh, evaluation and emotional opinions just were dominating, so to say. Uh, then uh, just uh, one more. Uh, just one more, so to say, aspect, Russian and Bashkir languages in linguistic landscape of Ufa. So, um, some of our participants uh, are sure that just the, presen the presence of this or that language and their order in the just uh, street names sometimes may be considered as an instrument of verbal impact of the authors um, to the addressees. As for the English language in linguistic landscape of Ufa, it's also just uh, some question to be discussed. Uh, introducing the English language into the linguistic landscape of our city was made several years ago. Some 20 years ago, just be drawn street names Natasha. after the Yes, I'm. F yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, how many? So how much time? Mm -hmm. Five minutes, and sometimes so your minutes. net yes. are not yeah, good. Yeah. Is not good. Yes, uh, I see. I'm finishing. Yeah, I'm finishing. Just, just a okay. moment. So that okay, is. No, uh, the, mm -hmm. Five minutes you have. Yes, I see. Yes, I see. Yes, I see. So, as I, I as I told you, the problem of the English language just is present in our uh, recipients' responses, and the problem. Of translation to uh, the Russian language is I show you uh, at the slide. Um, last but one, last but one. So the statistical background that is uh, just the percentage of different reactions in their responses. You see, so the valuation opinion just dominates. So 68 percent, and some other reactions, association, explanation, and so on. You can see here at the table. So, and then I come to the conclusions, yeah? Uh, so, uh, we assume that uh, some challenges of the urban hypertext should be carefully planned and implemented under specific...
conditions because cities have influence and we could mention about some uh, just about this task special means yes which could help to reach this pur the purpose so to draw and keep the addressee attention by certain language combination to, to, to model the addressee's aim yes at uh, successful perception to direct uh, just them in different situations typical uh, for a multi-ethnic environment and many of these means could be considered, of course, again, as implicit verbal impact. But such impact could result in verbal and non-verbal and which purely linguistic and psycholinguistic means used in a proper way, as we could see. Well, dear colleagues, thank you for your attention. I'm just finishing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Natasha, thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay, well, wonderful papers, yes. <laughs> okay, we, we, for, oh, we forgot to clap, <laughs> sorry, but yeah. wonderful. Uh, so, um, we have the last uh, paper because um, Kalmykova, Charchenko and Misson are not here. So, Otilia, is your time. Your presentation is Teacher Education for Improving Students' Narrative Production. Thank you. And yes. you are. <laughs> you are. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. Can you see my slides? Yes, but not yes. in the uh, presentation mode. No, just a moment. Okay. I'll try again. Okay, it's here. Just a moment. Yes. That's it. Oh. Yes, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I can see you, but uh, I can imagine. Okay, um, my presentation is, it's the title is The Teacher Education for Improving Students' Narratives Production. And uh, uh, we understand narratives, that's um, a term that we can use in uh, various genres, especially in personal narratives and fictional or make-believe ones. We have uh, two kinds of narratives, factual and fictional. But uh, for for this present, my oh. excuse me, we have a problem. Just a moment, please. Okay, for us it's okay. No. Just a moment. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Technical problems are and normal. It's all perfect yet or not? Can you see yeah. my words? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And we studied the fictional, and the fictional is have a more complex structure and a scheme selection. And that, that's very, very important. The fundamental character is in a narrative is the presence of causal event extractory. Marx said that the, the rules of causations demand that events occur in a constraining, logically current order. And that's very important for our uh, research. Mm, we study the extractory of the narrative and uh, the schemes of the story grammar are the theory that try to explain how the analogy of a word is represented in our memory in order to explain how we understand the narratives. We have many, many authors, but uh, we chose Stein Glenn for our research and the Stein Glenn study Humiliat. And the theory basis is Stein Glenn. And the first exception with Humiliat is that the first is that the history material has some type of internal representation must 
much like uh, sentences and words. And the second uh, is that the, it's going to be in terms of a network of category and the logical relations which exist between these categories. And a uh, history <coughs> consists of a setting category plus an episode system. These two categories are connected by an alarm relation. Here we have the 14 rules of the structure of category defining. I don't read these, but that's very important because we work with this uh, comprehension. We study this in text and movies. And we, we analyze the, the, the students' text and we, we make our material and in this uh, perspective. <coughs> and we have more two words uh, that's uh, reformulated, but it's clear Cabral and Dean Cabral. It's the, um, that's very important. The second rule, rule that's the initial formula and the code formula because you don't work with the oral and the, you don't have the intonation. Why investigate the narratives? We have some studies, oral and Shapiro, Los Rubin, Pinto, and about writing narratives, fictional and personal narrative. Many of the studies uh, is about oral narratives and uh, with children between five and uh, 20 years old. And we note that we have a gap <clears throat> with writing narratives and things. And then we study. And the aim of our study is analyze how the students write a uh, narrative text in order to make a didactic intervention. <laughs> we have three date collection. The first is a uh, command with five frame sequences for the production of the history in the classroom. The second is, is like this, but another, another uh, frames. And, um, and you have the free theme for the, the narrative. I'll show you. The first that the date collection. Yeah. The methodology of the data collections consists in applying a command with five frame sequence for the production of a history in the classroom. Then, um, and we have uh, 164 texts by the students at the last, the last years of the elementary school here in my city. Uh, initial results show that the students have <clears throat> difficulties on four uh, aspects. The test of genre, <clears throat> the extractory of the narrative, test of cohesion, relations of cause and consequence. That's very important because we make our intervention based in these results. And about the gen test of genre, uh, the narrative begins with once upon a time, but did not uh, fair tales. Some histories end with an advice, but they are not available. The students don't know the difference between fair tale and fable. And most texts are narrative, but there is no clarity about the test origin. That's uh, very interesting. We, have, we work in the first time with the narrative. Then we study the genres. Uh, about the, the extractory of the narrative, the initiation with or a temporal indicator with an adverb like uh, one day, on a beautiful day, on a sunny day, on a sunny afternoon, on morning, or uh, with a formula, once upon a time. Né? And this expression is common in the um, sixth grades. And, and about the setting, yeah. the setting is a place uh, like a, a house, garden, forest, yards, woods, something like this. And about the character, they have different uh, uh, form, but uh, the 
normally this the name of the person like Joan Joanzinho or a name or a noun a boy little boy or definite definite article plus noun the boy the girl or in the final an a plus noun a boy or with an uh, adjective but uh, we we show you a test 10 yeah? and what about this direct speech we have 164 texts but only two has the direct speech and like this ready now yes and um, ways to end the narrative and um, 63 narratives and with action uh, and the action is, are related with the last frame and uh, that's very important spending what happened or only describing the scene we have uh, 23 uh, narrative the the students write the end uh, or and then another we have a uh, end state or advice or you have them uh, they they live there happily ever but that's not a a fair tale and this equation is a problem in the rule three in episode system we, we have it. and then cause it's the d cohesive type it, the main cohesive ties in this uh, research is and we have we have another that after then because but normally the students write and and with different meanings we have some examples here um, and uh, with the function to add the elements or the temporal progression of relations of cause and consequence conclusions and finish and we'll work uh, with the students about this comprehension and the NFR use it in the narrative normally is a subject pronoun we have a text here to understand more one example one day a boy named john and then we have his he and ellipses here né? more than né? or the name john or the uh, noun and uh, boy or name again john or he he and a more um, and the more text you have, only he, she, it, we, uh, normally. And about the relations of cause and consequence, I said that it's very, very important that because it's a fundamental character of a histories in the presence of a causal event. And most of the histories are based on scenes and characters' actions, like this. I went to read the tree every day. The two trees were growing and growing and until it becomes a mellow tree. And like something like this. Some texts only describe the scenes. It's not a narrative. And the, most of the narratives don't have a problem to solve, are short, have phrases not linked. It's the pro equation problem, and have only one episode. Uh, don't don't have an uh, uh, episode system, okay? And our night if about this first date collections, then the narrative presents introduction of the scene and characters with conventional linguistic beginning expression, and actions that suggest a problem situation. The outcome is present, but it's not explaining how the problem situation was solved. We have this, and then we make an a mediation, and the, our mediation is a uh, we analyze the initial testing, we study the theoretical basis, uh, Stein Glenn and another, uh, the elaboration of lessons planned for, for every um class we uh, we made the material and for two years we are in the classroom and made the mediation 
And now I present uh, three texts about uh, with the same author to, um, to make the comparison. And this is the first station text, uh, excuse me, the first text. And uh, this is a short text. No? Mm -hmm. Just a moment. The second test, can you see the test is yeah, the students write more, have, right? and we can analyze. I don't, uh, we don't have time to read all, but I um, present what happened one la year later. There is an initial detail that immediately allows the reader to write some hypothesis, hypothesis for what will happen throughout the episodes. There is also an indication of temporality. It was a sunny Thursday, but that justifies the action. We are going to cross the street to buy the food of the characters, me and Bob John, my dog. There was the action of reading to understand the model and the episode system so that from the setting, the narrative develops. Um, and the characteristic linguistic merits of the typology and of the discourse genre can be observed and analyzed. Then we have then, uh, two years later, we have this text. We can read, but it's a very, very good text. And two years later, we can uh, observe that the author applies well to the first role described by Stein and Glenn in which the setting is a condition for the development of episodes and a character is presented indicating a state or activity which uh, already leads to the second rule of the this scene and the the group of the 14 rules of Steinglein. the character here is and he Miller is described in detail so that the reader can perceive that there is an element in him like this. It was quite cute, but a kind of cute that didn't attract anyone's attention. Attention that uh, will tiger the narrative if it weren't for the. Oh, oh. Otilia, we are not hearing you. We can't hear you, Otilia. Cogelo, Katia. Yeah, yeah. The, mm -hmm. the. I will write to her in WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> She's frozen. Yeah. Uh, in WhatsApp, uh, she is offline, so I don't know if uh, it's possible uh, she returns with us. Oh, I think it's possible. <laughs> One moment, please. She is trying to connect again. But it's difficult for her. <laughs> well, there uh, perhaps internet is disconnected. Yeah, mm -hmm. she cannot get in because it falls. You see. Mm hmm. Yes, it's our problem in this kind of um, event moment, but. We will, we will, we will win <laughs> this problem. Katya. Yes. Maybe you may continue this section. 
Yes, and uh, the, go to the, the next presenter because I think that Otilia cannot get in. in. Uh, okay. Ah, no, no, here. she can. I back. come back. Yeah. Uh, that's mm -hmm. uh, back. Oh, the, the internet is uh, yes. a problem. Don't worry. Okay. We know this. <laughs> oh, time. <laughs> I don't believe in it, but uh, we have a, yes, just a moment, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the, uh, the key. Uh, we have three texts in three years and the final consideration. The action of the teacher in education's alterated these previous results, making the teachers to understand that a complete diagnostic of the narratives can allow them to know the main problems and try to solve them, which requires a plan to work in the classroom during all the year and a mediations with each group of the students. That's very important. We have different plans for each uh, group, helping them to reflect on the way they organize their narratives. And the reference and that. Thank you very much. Thank you too, Attila. Um, so, Leonor, this is the last presentation because um we 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 would have six uh presentations but two of them um were not uh, are not here um but uh, we uh, pr presented all the four uh, researchers uh researches and we can talk about them uh i don't know if you have comments questions um would like uh, um, who likes begin the 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 dialogue? I I yes. I would. Sorry, I did not attend all the meeting because I am visiting all the and they are simultaneous. I have only one comment about. Uh, Stein and Glenn proposal. Of course, they were pioneers in in proposing a structure uh, based, namely, in their psychological uh, fundamentals. Uh, I but I have one uh, one uh, comment to make about when they say that the end uh, 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 cohesion uh, 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 co co cohesion role yes. was to add uh, to add simultaneously events this is not true they are not simultaneous they are sequentially including we cannot invert the order because the second event always take place later and we cannot event. so they are not simultaneous they are sequentially and in the time order so you cannot say then uh, he he uh, 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 turned off the page and read the the following chapter you cannot put then he read the following chapter and turn off, turn turn, uh, turn the page. It's impossible to 
change the order because they are not simultaneous. They are sequential. So this is the only, uh, it, it, it's a Stein and Glenn uh, proposal, but we must change it. I agree. Otilia, uh, uh, would you like to reply, Leonor? And after that, Danuta uh, has his hands on. <laughs> no, I agree. And I you can uh, use the end with the another function in the text. And then this one is the, the temporal progression. The students has used end in the temporal progression. No? Uh, or, or the relations of cause or con uh, and consequence. The students make this uh, that's in the different um, function. Uh, and in the text uh, have different function and it's not simultaneously. I agree with you. What uh, we called uh, in the school, the Pr Prague school, of uh, textual narratives, uh, uh, they call the progression. It's an important uh, characteristic of text building. The progression, it progresses, it goes on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Danuta, please. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Katia. Uh, I have a question to Sabrina. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for presenting a very interesting project. And I'd be very interested to see how it goes on. Because of the pandemic, you cannot do the, this stage three, which, which would be of great value, I think, especially in the context in which you, you are working. But for the time being, my question is about the induction to reading. What measures are taken in the center to actually make the uh, these people, these teenagers, they are right, uh, to read, right, to visit the library, to do this sort of extensive voluntary reading? Did you understand the question, Sabrina? Okay, so uh, no, repeat, please. Okay, so my question is, uh, in what way are these teenagers who are kept in this very special detention place, uh, how are they motivated to go to the library to choose the books they want? Is there any kind of, we would call it, induction to reading? So, how, how do you know what I mean? Uh, I can I can try to answer and Sabrina uh, we we say if you okay. if you want uh, well if if I understood well your question um, um, I think um, th these students are uh, not able to read um, uh, outside neither inside so uh, they need to stimulate it to do this. Uh, during this time, this time, so um, the oh. so mm -hmm. the 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 uh, the activity we uh, intend to promote this stimuli is um, is uh, the Jumanji project. Okay, so, so that would, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so the, they they need. Um, um, um uh, a reason for uh, reading because um they they don't like read they don't like write and um uh, in pandemic moment it's difficult because they are um uh, they are closed they are uh, closed and uh, they they do not have contact with others so um we cannot to stay with them and we uh, try to to think uh, a project that uh, motivates uh, oh, yes, motivate so. the students okay okay thank you, thank you very much good luck thank with you. the continuation 
Sabrina Thank and, you. and Katia as the supervisor, I guess, right? Thank you. Okay. We hope. Thank you very much. Thank, <laughs> you. May, Thank may, you very much. May I, I, I uh, make a compliment to Natalia Peskova? Nice to see you. Um, um, any Glad to see you too. Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, any questions, comments? Yes, I have one as to Sabrina. Uh, could you explain more about the readings diaries? That's very important. How is the proposal? How many times they write in the diaries? What do you do with the diaries? It's the contact is the, the research and the, the, the people there. Now. Is it okay for you, Sabrina? No? Okay. Uh, so, um, um, this moment was this uh, this moment that moment was difficult for us teachers in Brazil in south of Brazil because we are not in contact with the students and in the social education educational context it's more difficult to be with the students so we invited the um, um, the professionals um, who can stay with the students to um, to apply <laughs> this project, uh, but uh, they um, they are they they don't have time to uh, stay all the week with the stu just to, just to, with the students because um, sometimes they are not a professional. For example, in a library uh who can uh stay with the students so our intention is um um we have um week a weekly register for example uh each week uh the students and the teacher uh visit the library and uh, choose a book and uh, uh, write something but it was not possible. So in this moment, uh, today, we have one register, yes, Sabrina, one, uh, one um, narrative because they have to, um, to go on with the project, the, um, the step three, and it was not possible to go on. Uh, uh, so we tried to do something for motivate, uh, for motivating the the writing or oh, the reading and um it it is difficult because um, um sometimes we do not have teachers and sometimes we do not have conditions to um put to uh, put the students together because sometimes uh it's not possible because of the pandemic situation um let me see yes and um they have the notebooks for uh, for notes um in the library and when they visit the library they can um write about your perceptions your uh, impressions uh, of the project of the film of the book and go on if it's possible. Portilia, uh, I think that I can tell you our experience, how we manage with uh, the difficult job of early literacy teaching in this distance uh, 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 circumstances because children are isolated in their homes. So what we did is the following. We are asking the, the family, the uh, care uh, giver, givers uh, to 
help us and we send the material already prepared for instance uh, uh, in the second uh, year uh, uh, children are uh, uh, learning how to write in cursive letters so we send the não sei como se diz pautada the the paper already prepared mm -hmm. with the with the letter models and for instance we send the instructions for parents how to dictate all explicitly explicitly made and the child will uh, write down uh, in the, the, those prepared pages with the letter models and also uh, to write uh, stories with the beginning of the continuative for instance once upon a time and then the child must continue then we, we uh, uh, the parents will give them some time and then the the ca uh, caregiver said one day to begin the the event and the, so we we suggest the topic you will write a story about uh for instance uh, a very helpful dog or something like that we, we gave the the topic and then the child will write following those those guides uh, guide uh, joiners no? and the uh, and this is what we do. So weekly, the, the local uh, educational secretary distribute in their homes the material. See? Ah, do you have? <laughs> do you have? Uh, Otilia have the, the, the because Otilia uh, uh, attend some of because uh, uh, we give uh, the weekly preparation to teachers and uh, coordinators how to manage in this situation. But of course, the results are not the same. Because one thing is the student being together with the, their classroom mates and with the direct assistant of the teacher. And, but this is what we can do in this difficult pandemic situation. Yes. Yeah. I think in our uh, symposium, um, <laughs> this moment is um, a, a, a big challenge <laughs> uh, for uh, writing and reading um, in, uh, in, uh, at home and at school, uh, I think. Um, in social education now context, it's more difficult because um, they are not at home and they do they they don't have a contact with teachers uh, because uh, the classes uh, are uh, remote were remote uh, until last month um so um uh, the contact of these students um were with um I don't know exactly the, 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 the name, but social educational agent, for example, not teacher, uh, but the, the professional who cares the student uh, in the prison. 
uh, so uh, the, the experiences are different. But um, I think we, we have uh, for discussion, um, for example, um, uh, how we can motivate reading and writing uh, and how we can um, hear our students and our teachers and uh, the, the, the people uh, that are engaged, uh, which are engaged in the, the, the educational context. For example, in Brazil, we are not, we didn't have classes uh, for um, uh, uh, 18 months, for example. <laughs> and how, how, uh, how was in Russia? How was our, uh, uh, how was your country? How was your country during this time? Uh, 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 Danuta, Natasha, uh you you can talk for us about uh, the situation of the students mainly uh the the primary school education well if if, if i may in poland i mean i work at the university so we've been online since last march not a single mm. class was run and was across all the universities schools actually went back to face-to-face -face teaching or hybrid teaching for a while and then when the situation got worse they 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 went back to the online teaching so th this is really tough and especially in terms of tasks mm -hmm. like writing because mm -hmm. that obviously is a great burden on us to and and students and it's like hours and hours uh, on the computer. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's something that we all share, right? I suppose it's the same in Russia, Natalia, right? Are yes. you online? Yes, we started online uh, the spring term, yeah, last last year, I mean, yeah? Last year, the from same. From March, yeah, from March and up to June. Uh, we, we started online all the time. And mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, this year, this academic year, I mean, yeah, uh, we again started online in autumn, in autumn, yeah. But now we are just studying, just in contact, offline. Ah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, we, we're, still, uh, we're still online. We're still online till the end of September. And mm -hmm. we're hoping for the new academic year to open up the universities in terms of face-to-face -face yeah. teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but not yet, although the situation is better, but you never know, right? Still, before we are all vaccinated, or at least 70%, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which is not Adri yet. Adriana, what is the situation in Argentina? Hi, everyone. Uh, the situation is similar to uh, Danuta's uh, yes, country. Uh, we started online last year, yes, uh, in March and we are still uh, online lessons. Primary school and secondary school went back to uh, the classrooms for a month and or a month and a half, but now they are um, remote, yes, or on remote uh, learning. I'm, I'm in tertiary level, yes, and we are online and we will be online. I think for, for the whole year, but it is true. Yes, uh, I teach writing or I try to <laughs> and uh, practice. Yes, practice is very important. I uh, agree with Otilia and uh, I, I wasn't present when the girls um, presented their research, uh, but I find it difficult. Yes, to motivate uh, young adults and adults, my uh, students to read. They don't read even in their mother tongue or they are reluctant, yes, <laughs> to to do so. So I, I, I work for that. Yeah, yes. Not even yes from the device. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, nowadays we have a very uh, strong com competitor is television and those games, uh, games yeah. and uh, uh, books cannot compete with them. 
-hmm. But uh, I, I, I would say to you that for elementary students, mm -hmm. elementary school students in Brazil, it is quite difficult uh, teaching at distance online because uh, people do not have even a, a, a computer they have only one uh, 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 device, uh, smartphone, uh, 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 phone, and uh, and this all the all children must use the same one in at mm -hmm. the same time and. It's a, a quite a very hard problem to teach mm -hmm. uh, online mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Brazil. Yeah. The conditions mm -hmm. are very, very poor, you see. We, we also in Poland at the beginning had a problem of teachers who actually were not very well acquainted with the system. And they were mm -hmm. like given last March two weeks, like we were given two weeks to get ready with everything. So it was like an mm -hmm. intensive time. And I have to say that my university organized it very well. And we went through the training. So we're using teams on a regular mm -hmm. basis. And, and the same was with teachers. But obviously, there was a lot of struggle, a lot of struggle. Equipment wasn't that much of a problem because the government, the local governments assured that schools have equipment that they lend to pupils. So it mm -hmm. was a bit of less of a problem. At the beginning, it was difficult, but with time, it was kind of solved. Mm -hmm. Although, mm -hmm. as Professor Oscar Cabral is saying, obviously, in big families, it remained the problem, right? If you have several children that have to use and be online. So, but schools mm -hmm. usually provide it and still provide the computers for, for the pupils. Yes. Yes. If, you, if you we have uh, a gap bef before, the COVID-19, we have a big gap now <laughs> because uh, COVID-19 uh, is here and the consequences are, uh, are here too. So writing and reading um, uh, are big challenges yet. <laughs> but I, I would say that even a, sorry for the bigger challenge is the mental state because I see it even in my students a lot of them yeah. you know depressed and and it it's really tough I mean I think we can make up for for knowledge and ability perhaps something will be lost but the mental side is actually yeah. the biggest yeah. you know the biggest problem yeah I agree for the many people in the high school they said that it's better work we have money. Many, many teachers had said me that they changed the the meaning of the school for the high school. What I'm doing here, what I mm -hmm. about my future, and it's better work. Uh, normally, the 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 people here come to the school to to meet another to speak. Né? Yes. But yes, yes. That alone, and they said, ah, it's better work and have money." Né? And uh, yeah. I feel uh, many, many teachers here are uh, speaking with the students, come back to the school. And uh, we have many, many, many challenges. Huh? It's, we have many things to study and to comprehend, to make a comprehension about what happened with the, the people. Huh? Mm -hmm. okay. Any comments, Mark? Do we still have time for, for questions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I have a question to uh, Natalia, right? Because you talked a very interesting topic and very interesting research. And there's quite a few things that I would like to ask, but I think we're running out of time. Uh, one sort of a piece of information, you said that your place is a polyethnic. I understand it's Bakshir and Russian. Could you tell us a little bit more about the status of the two languages and how it actually affects the linguistic landscape of the town? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so in the linguistic landscape, we really have two 
languages, the Bashki language and the Russian language. But uh, really, in our, uh, and now English, by the way. <laughs> by okay, the way, yes. now English, just in the center, absolutely, yeah. It is everywhere. In the, not only in the places of entertainment, but uh, just in the street names and so on and so forth. But uh, you see, really, our region is not two languages, not bilingual. It is uh, multilingual. We have a really multi-ethnic or poly-ethnic um, situation because uh, just the soci sociologists say that uh, we're having about about 30, more than 30 uh, nations, nationalities and languages in our region, in the Bashki region, yes? So the Urals just... Uh, the Tata language, uh, the Mordovian language, uh, and um, uh, just uh, m m perhaps even not the region, not even not uh, not only the languages typical for our uh, just region, but uh, we have uh, some societies made by Georgians, Armenians, Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan and so on and so forth. So that that is the heritage of the USSR, you see, of the Soviet country. And uh, of course, so the presence of uh, several languages is was always discussed, you see. And uh, many people think that it was not only Russian and Bashki. So they say that there should be Tatar language because people from Kazan just uh, live um, uh, in a great number, yes? So Tata nation is presented in our region. But uh, you see policy that uh, it stayed uh, during the Soviet years, the two languages only. So um, that is why sometimes we, uh, we can uh, just hear uh, maybe some reproaches, yes? But uh, maybe English uh, somehow improves the situation. Uh, as for me, I think it's not bad, really, yes. So um, young generation usually say it's very good uh, to have English uh, just in our linguistic um, uh, environment, in the urban text or city text, yes. They say they like it. So because it shows that we belong too, right. to the outer world, outside. Yeah. That's it. So, uh, and but still, I think so. We should somehow uh, investigate the situation still, because uh, there are different, uh, just different um, feelings, different emotions uh, in the younger generation. Yeah. Uh, so the the older generation. By the way, sometimes I think that the younger generation is maybe. Um, maybe just more ready to take uh, just any languages, you see? Because sometimes um, the representatives of old generation, they say they don't know English. They don't want to have just alien language. And uh, the youth is ready for any just, for any language. And, uh, and by, by the way, the situation with the, just uh, with COVID, yes, the situation, uh, the situation with COVID somehow improved it. Now the older generation say, all right, just any language, but we just want to travel around the city and <laughs> just to live. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. The uh, usual life, so, so uh, multi yes, mm -hmm. well. I think it well, seems. Uh, I think the 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 data of your research, Natalia, it's uh, 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 are similar than our students because uh, if they have uh, reasons to study uh, English or uh, Spanish or uh, um, Dutch, <laughs> for example, yeah. uh, they they say. All, all right, but if, yeah. if our, uh, but your research is very interesting. We can we can hear our students uh, about uh, uh, about they they like because uh, they uh, we we have to know about mm -hmm. this 
for for thinking our practices too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Danuta again, yes. I'm sorry, but this this is a fascinating topic, right? Linguistic yeah, language. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Natalia, you said that in the first stage, you're actually going to get your students' responses on how to improve linguistic landscape. And by means of improving, yeah. did you actually mean to somehow incorporate all the other languages, all the ethnicity, to make it more, you know, uh, identity representative since you have so many languages? <laughs> So what what is this improvement of linguistic landscape? What what is meant by this? Mm -hmm. You see, uh, uh, we think that we should uh, uh, we should um, just uh, try and uh, prepare some uh, maybe some um, some methodical instructions. <laughs> I don't know how how to express it uh, just um, in the right way, uh, but we are thinking about some uh, some. You voice is breaking. Language. Yeah. Well, so what? You don't hear me? Yeah. It breaks. There are some problems. Yeah. Some some problems. Yeah. There are some yeah. problems. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we are thinking about developing some principles uh, of improving. Yes. Uh, the the linguistic landscape, and um, we are going to propose perhaps. Uh, just to add uh, the Tatar language, for example, because uh, there are a lot of uh, representatives of the Tatar nations in our region and in Ufa too. Yes. And okay, so, so I know. I, yeah. Uh, we have some, the, if, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, thank is, you. Is it just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you for there the comments some, and questions. Uh, are and very nice. Uh, some problems with the internet now, yeah? Yeah. yeah so we know perhaps, the problem, don't worry. Yeah. Perhaps you, uh, if you continue with the questions, you can uh, uh, turn off your cam. Perhaps the, the signal uh, can be good, can be better. Mm -hmm. Turn off camera. your camera. No. The problem usually know. is in the microphone, or not in cameras, or, I think. Yeah. Ochilia, you know who are the two other people that we cannot see their names, neither their names or faces? Ah, yeah. You know who are them? <laughs> the two others. The two others. Uh, the, um, Anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know who are them? Uh, you know the, um, the, the it just says it's up you know Simone Luis and uh, and, uh, and the other is the ZAP organization I think the other one Are you, ah Simone is uh, Simone. Yes, Simone. Hi. And the other <laughs> one I think um, is the, the other um, one who is the organization? It's yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I'm not sure. I asked because uh, for the minutes of this session, you must know who attended, and so okay. this is why I asked after afterwards. You will have some difficulties to recuperate. Okay. Any questions, comments? It was a good section, I think. Yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm so very happy. Very interesting. I like it very mm -hmm. much. Thank you, everybody, for interesting thank information. Thank we yes. have a problem, but uh, we can solve it. Yeah. We are bigger mm -hmm. of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations for your presentations. And uh, I hope you enjoy a lot the, uh, the Congress. And I hope I see you in another session, in another moment. And uh, 
more uh, healthy and uh, um, keep well and um, see you again. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for sharing the session and coping with difficulties yeah. very well with a smile. The so, right attitude. Okay. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Cooperation and support. Okay. <laughs> and support and cooperation. Uh, uh, maybe in our symposium. Yes. Yeah, you are too.